So here we are ready to animate our textures and we're gonna do that in Photoshop. So I'm gonna create a new file with 4K dimensions and that's 3840 by 2160 and 72 PPI is fine as well. And we're creating these at 4K resolution because this is gonna give us a lot more options when we use them in our project and maybe even in future projects where we need our textures to be larger than they are here. So let's drag in our style frame and let's take a look at the textures. It looks like we've got two types of textures here. We've got these ones inside the trees, which is kind of like a brushy texture where we can see brush strokes. And the one in the middle here, it's like a big soft wash, or maybe one big stroke of some acrylic or watercolor paints. So we're definitely gonna create at least two types of textures. If you're not the designer, it's a really big help to actually get the texture assets that the designer has used. So here are the texture assets that Yana has used. So I can see here, there's a couple of those brush stroke textures. She's got three here over a few different colors. I think we can get away with creating two and then one wash texture as well. So let's drag two of these brush textures in and we can see they're very big. Let's zoom out and we're gonna use these as a reference to create our animated textures. Let's start with this one. And what I'm gonna do is create a folder called this brush texture one. And I'm gonna add four empty layers into this folder by clicking down here four times. And then I'm gonna duplicate that layer with Control J and I'm gonna do that twice. I'm gonna rename this one to brush texture two and then call this top one brush white. Now this is our first brush texture. So I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna press Control T to bring up our transform properties and then just scale this up a bit until it fills more of the canvas. And then I'm gonna open up one of these layers for brush texture one. So how we're gonna animate this texture is I'm gonna create four slightly different versions of this texture. And when, when we loop them, it's gonna alternate slightly between all of them as if it was being painted on four different times. And it will just add a bit more life to these static parts of the animation. Now I'm gonna recreate this texture using Photoshop brushes. It looks like this one might have been created with a Photoshop brush. So you can always get in contact with your designer and ask them to send over the brushes to you if they're available. But I've got some brushes that look pretty similar to this. So I'm gonna use those. So I'm gonna open my brush panel over here and I'm gonna use some brushes from Kyle T. Webster. And if you don't have any of his brushes, you can get them for free by going over here on the right, selecting get more brushes. That will open up a web browser to the Adobe site. And if you scroll down, you can click and see all of his brushes that Carl T. Webster has made. And you can download them all for free just by clicking download. I highly recommend the Mega Pack that has over 300 brushes. And you can see lots of different styles in here. You've got some inky ones, some brushy ones, some pencils, some gouache, really handy. So here's that Mega Pack here. And you can see there's lots of brushes in the paint box. So I've gone and tried a whole bunch of these out and then selected my favorite ones and put them in their own separate folder. So down here, I have Kyle Textures 01, which is a collection of some of my favorite Kyle brushes and some that I think will work really good for this. So Kyle's paint box oil bristle tilt looks a bit like this. And I think that matches this brush stroke pretty closely. So I'm gonna increase the brush size. And on the first layer in our brush texture one, I'm just going to roughly kind of trace over this existing brush texture. I don't need to be super exact, but I'm trying to get the rough shape and style that the original texture would have been drawn in. And then I'm gonna hide that layer, go on to layer two and do the same. And even though I'm tracing over the same image, there's gonna be a fair bit of variation in the lines that I draw. So then when we loop these back, it's gonna look like some slightly different paint strokes and make a cool animated feel. And then I'm gonna do that for layer three and four as well. There we are, I've got four versions of that brush texture 01. Let's hide that group and then repeat the same for this brush texture with brush texture two. Now we're gonna do something slightly different for brush wipe. If we look at our style frame, we notice that this brush wipe is pretty much just two strokes. And if we try to replicate that in the same method, we're gonna have our strokes bumping all over the place because we're not gonna be able to draw them that close to each other. And if we are, it's not gonna look that interesting when we flip between them in our loop. So I'm gonna use a different method for this one and create textured wash that we can apply as a mat to this layer. So let's hide that layer and let's go up to layer one. And I'm gonna select another one of Kyle's brushes, uh, Kyle's paint box watercolor fill. And I'm gonna increase the size of this brush. And you can see when we apply this one, we just get a lot of texture. What I'm gonna do is make a whole bunch of horizontal strokes across our canvas. Doesn't matter if they overlap a bit, and extend to the end. I just want to roughly fill this middle area with some texture. There we are. Now I'm going to do the same on the second layer. I'm not really trying to match it too much. The only thing that I do want to keep consistent is the overall value. So I don't want this one to be overall too much darker or too much lighter than our first layer. So I'm going to just flick back and forth. I see that this one's still pretty light. So add a few more heavy lines to it. Okay, they're looking pretty similar now. And then continue that for number three and four. 
So there we are, we've got four layers of our brush wipe, four of brush texture one, and four of brush texture two. So now what we can do is delete our style frame, delete our background, and then save this file. All right, now it's time to import that PSD into our After Effects file. Let's go to our imports folder, press Control I, find that PSD and make sure we import it as composition retain layer sizes, click import, and click OK. And that's gonna open up a new comp. And inside that comp, we have three other comps because each of those Photoshop folders will come in as a comp. And we can see them down here. We've got brush texture one, O2, and brush wipe. So I'm actually gonna drag them into our texture folder that I've already made down here and drag them into video textures. So let's start with brush texture one. Let's turn transparency on so we can see what's actually happening. And we can see we've got four layers here. So I'm gonna zoom right in down so I can see some more individual frame numbers and at six frames in, I'm gonna press Alt and right square bracket to trim them down to six frames. And then I'm gonna drag those into a sequence and then I'm holding shift as I do that so they snap to the end of the previous layer. And now we've got them all in a sequence. So I'm gonna press N on my keyboard to put an end to my work area. And then if I play that back, it's gonna loop these textures. Now they're looking pretty good. And I just know from experience that around six frames per each texture works out to be a really nice look. And you can always change the speed later and I'll show you that soon. So we've got these looping in the work area and we know that they loop nicely, but how do we get them to loop in the composition? There are a few methods you can do this. You can render this one second out as a video and loop that the same that we did our Swift file, or you could trim the comp to this length and add some expressions on the time remapping feature so it loops that way. But I find that way just ends up with a lot of drop frames and isn't quite as consistent. So the method that I use, and it's not the most elegant solution and probably the most basic one, is to just copy and paste these until the end of the composition. I know this seems like a lot of work, but a composition is only 10 seconds long. That's all we need this looping tech to be. It's gonna be really quick to duplicate these and fill out the comp. And because I've done this a lot, I've worked out the keyboard shortcut system to do this the most efficiently. So I'm gonna press Control D to duplicate them, Control right square bracket, to bring them up to the top, hold shift and drag them across. And then while holding shift, click the bottom one again, and then repeat that sequence, copying them with control D, moving them up to the top, dragging them over and doing it again. And I only need to repeat that sequence about four times to fill up this comp. And even if you need to do it longer than 10 seconds, it doesn't take that long because you know, you're doubling the amount of frames every time you do that. And I'm gonna delete these top layers that, you know, aren't even visible within the 10 seconds. And then at the very start, I'm gonna change the layer color of these first four, just in case I come back to this project in three years. And I'm not sure how many of these images I have looped. Now I chose to loop these with four images because it's much harder to see the looping point than say with two or three. But once you get to five or six, which you can certainly do, and it's not that much more work, but once you get to five or six, it's probably just as invisible as with a four frame loop. So you get diminishing returns on it. But if you want it to be a bit more invisible, you can go up to six or eight frames. So now this brush texture one is completely looping and ready to work with. And I'm gonna use that same process on brush texture two and on brush wipe as well. So now we've got our looping textures ready. Let's go into one of our trees and apply the textures to one of our leaves. I'm gonna drag in our style frame. So we've got a reference to what this texture should look like. And here I'm gonna grab texture one, place it over the top. We can see it's way bigger than we need it to be, which is better than it being too small and let's scale it down so it kind of matches the size. And let's just add the effect fill. We can eye drop the color here, which is pretty close to white. And I'm gonna drag that over our circle. Let's put it directly over our circle layer and then adjust its rotation so it kind of lines up with the style frame here. And then add the effect set matte. Take the matte from layer six, which is our circle. Make sure they're both continually rasterizing. And I also wanna parent it to our circle layer as well so that when our layer wiggles, our texture wiggles too. And there we are, we've got a nice animated texture over our tree. Now we've also got a texture down here floating beneath this blue rectangle. So we're gonna apply the same process, but we're gonna to need to get a little bit tricky with how we do this one here. So I'm gonna duplicate this brush texture. I'm gonna put it underneath our rectangle and I'm gonna take the set mat and take that from layer two, which is our rectangle. Make sure that one's continually rasterizing as well. And then I'm gonna change the fill color to this sort of peach color that we have here. And if we hide our rectangle, we can see that we've got our texture animating underneath. Now I'm gonna pair that to our rectangle as well. So it's wiggling with our rectangle and not our circle. And I'm gonna move this texture down a bit and change its rotation to further match the style frame and then turn the rectangle on top. Now we need this to be lower than the rectangle, but if we move the position of this texture layer, it's not going to move. 
because it's only going to be visible where the rectangle is because of the set matte effect. So in this scenario, what we can do is add the effect transform, which adds some more transform properties like position, scale, and rotation that you can animate in isolation of your actual transform properties down here as an effect. So from here, we can take its Y position value, which is 600 here, and just drag that a little further down until it kind of matches our style frame. I think 330 looks about right. Uh, and we can see in our style frame that this goes behind our tree. So let's just move this tree texture to behind our tree. There we are. And let's color this one red as well so we don't get it mixed up with this other brush texture. And if we play that back, we've got both textures animating nicely. Now let's hide our style frame. I'm gonna select the style frame and our first brush texture, copy them both, move into our tree two comp, paste them again, go into one of our other tree comps, paste them both in there to make the style frame visible and then apply the same process, this time to this blue square. Now we've got our trees textured, let's add that background texture. I'm gonna drag in one of the background textures that we have from Yana, scale this down to maybe 40% until that kind of matches our style frame. And then on top, we're gonna to put our brush wipe, put that directly over our background texture here, which I'll rename. And from here, what we can do is select our background texture and then from here, change the track mat to alpha mat inverted. So what alpha mat inverted is doing is creating every dark area in our brush wipe layer. It's gonna make that transparent in our background texture layer. So if we play that back, we can see a subtle wash texture being applied to our background texture. This might be a bit too subtle. So what we can do here is add the levels effect to our brush wipe, go into our alpha setting, and then move these handles in from the outside into the middle. And that is just gonna crush the alpha channel a bit and add some more contrast. You can see if we push it really far, things either become completely transparent or not. We want a bit more variation in here, not so much contrast, but a little bit more than we had before. That's looking quite good. And we can even move that around to find a better position for it. Now I've got a little animated brush wipe for our background texture here. And I find these kind of textures are just really useful for adding subtle animation to things in the background to bring the piece to life a little bit more and seem a bit more energetic. Now there's one more effect that we can add to really bring this animation together. I'm gonna add that to a new adjustment layer that I'll create with Control alt y And I'm gonna rename this adjustment layer Boil because that is what we're going to add. And we're gonna do that with a turbulent displace effect. Boil is when you've drawn something in frame by frame animation and there's some slight differences between each frame because you've drawn it slightly differently because your hand has moved because no one can draw an exact duplicate image with their own hand. So the boil is the kind of shifting of the edges when something is drawn imperfectly over time. And that is something I really like to see in frame by frame animation and something that you can also fake in After Effects to a certain extent. So here's how we're gonna do it with a turbulent displace effect. So when we add it, we can see it warps our whole image. So this is warping way too much, so let's adjust that. So let's adjust the amount down really low to maybe five. Now if we flicked that turbulent displace on and off, we can see it's warping all of our edges slightly. And let's turn the size down to about 20 as well. So now if we take a close up and toggle that on and off, we can see there's some slight warping of our layers. And to get this animate, we can open up our evolution options, alt click the random seed property and add the expression time times, let's say 50. And that will give a new random seed every frame. So we'll get some new warping every frame. Now this looks way too hectic. So how do we slow this down? So we can slow this down by making it happen every two, four or six frames. So to do that, we add the expression posterized time exactly like the effect. And then we put in the frame rate that we want. Let's try it with six frames a second, which is a bit slower than animating on twos. This would be animating on fours. And we need to put a semicolon after that, put time on a new line. Let's see how that looks. That is looking much better. So let's go and focus in on this little block down here so we can see how much it's warping. That might be warping a little too much. So let's change the amount down to maybe three. And now we just get a little bit of motion in there. And I think across the whole animation, that's starting to look much, much better. Now, if you're finding that this is looking too hectic, something like adjusting the speed of the textures can really help, or if you think it's not looking hectic enough. So you can change the speed of the texture by right-clicking, going time, time stretch. And at the moment, the stretch factor is 100, so it's you know, playing at 100% of the speed. But if we change the stretch factor to 50, it is gonna shrink by 50% and play twice as fast. So now our texture in our background is gonna go much faster. And this might actually suit this animation a little better because we've got so much animation in the wind. 
So you can still adjust the frame rate of your textures well after you've drawn them and well after you've made them loop. Now, the last thing we want to do is make this whole animation loop for a bit longer than three seconds. So it's a three seconds in our work area. So I'm going to right click, trim come to work area. And then over here in our project window where we've got MP lesson 01 main, I'm going to drag that into another comp, extend that comp. I'm just going to put it at 13 seconds at the moment, duplicate our main comp, slide that over for as many times as we want. Here it will animate for nine seconds, right click, trim comp to work area. Now we can render this file and our animation is complete. And let's rename this comp lesson one main looped. To render you have a few options. I like to just add it to media encoder Q and the default H.264 setting is normally perfect for most animations. If your client needs a high res file, animate it as quick time and maybe a ProRes 422 or 444 if you need transparency. The best thing to do is get your delivery specs from your client. But when in doubt, I always go to H.264.